In a 10, scrap Bonnie. Ah, Bonnie, the scariest animatronic to some, even Scott Cawthon, who would have nightmares about you. But this is probably why he didn't make you a scrap animatronic, yet here we are with the fan base once again showcasing that their only desire is to watch the world burn and laugh while we all go up in flames, but then miraculously not die somehow, only for it to be explained years later in a random book that a load of hardcore game purists claim isn't canon. However, Scrap Bonnie is definitely worthy of making this list, because like, look at it. I love rabbits, they're freaking adorable. But zombie rabbits always creeped me out for some reason, and this reminds me of a zombie rabbit. The exposed endoskeleton, the random weird claw-like thing they got going on. It's like if Scrap Baby was reassembling herself, and then Elizabeth was like, No! I want to possess Bonnie! And then she remade herself as Bonnie. Honestly, I'm surprised Scott didn't pull something like that at this point. With like, this is just the simple explanation of Elizabeth liked Bonnie, and then that's it, that's the only thing we get. Damn, maybe that's the scariest thing of all. In at 9, Scrap Nightmare Bonnie. What's that? Two Bonnie animatronics in a row on a list not about Bonnie? Yes! But mostly because I was scrolling through Google Images and these two caught my eye first. Scrap Nightmare Bonnie is scary for all the reasons I listed above, and then you just add Nightmare to it. Although I guess... That doesn't really make for a compelling number, and I should talk about it more. The concept of the nightmare animatronics is certainly freaky, but the fact that they aren't real kind of like soothes me, you know? Like, sure, none of these animatronics are real, but even in their universe, the nightmare animatronics aren't real and can't really hurt you. But, with the implication of the scrapped nature of this version, it seems to suggest against that idea, and I think that makes it freakier. But also the potential that the arm at the end of that one security breach trailer that was never referenced again, by the way, Steel Wool, looks like Nightmare Freddy's arm and it only adds to the idea that they're not going to be fake for very long like they're going to be real animatronics very soon and I don't like that if that ends up being the thing if they make the nightmare animatronics actual animatronics and security breach this channel is done with FNAF straight up and it ate scrap baby endo Scrap Baby is already the freakiest of all the scrap animatronics, or at least the canon scrap animatronics, but never did I think about what her endoskeleton would look like, because let's be honest, that's kind of freaky. I mean, her name is literally Baby, I, I don't want to talk about her endoskeleton, that'll put me on like some kind of watch list. However, this goddamn Scrap Baby endo concept is horrifying. Why does it have boobs? It's an endoskeleton! You don't actually have to give it boobs! Why did Baby even reassemble herself? In that way is my question. Is it because she like needs to be able to pass as a human like she does in the fourth closet novel? Like seriously, this has been something that has always bugged me. Because like, why? Why did Scrap Baby reassemble themselves with a chest? And then like, why, why are people including this as a part of her endoskeleton? This hurts me on like a deep level. I don't, I don't want to think about it anymore. Let's move on. Number 7, Shadow Mangle. As much as I thought Shadow Mangle would be terrifying, and well, it is, I'm actually not finding this to be one of the most scary on our list, but it's still pretty scary. Shadow Mangle, even in one iteration, is pictured as being fully whole. Although even then we kind of get some like Cthulhu-like vibes from this animatronic. The version of Mangle is pictured as being fully together with a big bushy tail and furry fox face and ears. Its teeth and eyes glow a bright white and it sports a little bow tie. But while that all sounds not too bad in terms of scare factor, behind it in shadow loom a series of tentaclay. Tentac Tentacles, if you will, obviously meant to be the pieces and bits that couldn't quite fit back together. Anything that is like tentacles looming behind it, I'm like, mm -mm, no, no, not gonna do that. That doesn't seem like a good idea. And it's six scrap puppet. I don't know why, but like every version of the puppet intended to be scary gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like the Reaper puppet, which I talk about in multiple FNAF videos, and is honestly the epitome of horrifying for me, is the Reaper puppet. And then there's like the Havoc Puppet of the Dermidibus series, and now we have Scrap Puppet. This was only a concept and fan art, but it, like it doesn't actually appear in any of the games, but it's still creepy, okay? It doesn't have to appear in a game. This is fan animatronics for a reason. 
doesn't appear in game. And I don't think that there's a mod for it either if you watch that video. Although that is a good idea. You should you should make a mod for this. There should just be a FNAF game that's all puppets. Anyway, while some people may not be able to make a game for their creations, you can you can make a mod or you can like make a like a, a model for it in Source Filmmaker and then let people use it for mods. Anyways, this particular image that I found just looks like the beginning of a scrap puppet jump scare, as if you were salvaging them in FNAF 6. And obviously it's not actually in the game because the puppet was captured by Lefty, but still, this just, it puts me on edge. And then it has like all like the little tentacle things coming off of it and like a creepy smile. Like I, I don't know, It's put, it puts me on edge. Or it's edging me because of those tentacles. Is that too far? I mean, Food Wars said it, so like, can I make the joke? How about doing a number five, Vanny? Now I know that currently all we know about Vanny is that she's being controlled by Glitch Trap and that she's supposedly supposed to be the security guard Vanessa as well, but there were so many people accusing Vanny of being a robot in the early days of the trailers. Now don't get me wrong, but if that happens I'm going to jump off a building and everyone has to watch. Turning Vanny into an animatronic would probably take away from the story of this game so much, and honestly that would just make another game with Afton as the villain, which I'm sure plenty of people are fine with, but I think we all know that I'm firmly against Afton being brought back yet again. Since if we're moving forward, I don't want to have to deal with more Afton. He's like the link to the confusing and mind-numbing timeline, and honestly, it just makes me dizzy to think about it. He's like the ex that won't let go. <laughs> He's just like, let us move on, please, Afton. Stop calling me. And it for Nightmare Scrap Baby. Really? You just had to take probably the freakiest bitch of the bunch and turn her into a nightmare scrap version. What the living hell, man. Okay, I'll admit that this should be higher on the list, so actually, you know what, I'll move it. Okay, there we go, it's at number four now. <laughs> like, it was, it was originally at number eight, but then I switched it with Scrap Baby's end of specifically so that I could say that I already said that Scrap Baby is the scariest of the scrap animatronics. Yes, this was a bit. And turning them into a nightmare version that wants to eat my soul is too much, okay? Amanda and I are the only ones who are supposed to do the whole soul eating thing. But Nightmare Scrap Baby looks like she wants to eat my firstborn child. Like, do you understand how absolutely terrifying this thing is? Some of them even look like Pennywise after they're old and gray and been doing too much no no snow. Pennywise would be scared of Nightmare Scrap Baby. Afton would disown Elizabeth as his daughter for this. This is literally the stuff of nightmares, which I guess was the point. So, uh, good job, guys. You got me to freak. <laughs> Congratulations. Get it close to the end in number three, SCP-053. SCP-053, aka the young girl, appears to be a small three-year-old girl. She is capable of basic speech and appears to be slightly above average in mental development. She has a generally pleasant personality and rarely seems upset, becoming agitated only in the presence of groups of people. Any and all humans over the age of three who make eye contact, physically touch, or remain around SCP-053 for longer than 10 minutes will rapidly become irrational, paranoid, and homicidal. Most, if not all, of these feelings will be directed at 053, and afflicted subjects will attempt to kill 053 after first killing or driving off all humans visible to them. Those attempting to kill 053 will suffer massive heart attacks or seizures and die seconds after doing any physical damage to SCP-053. The SCP will also regenerate almost instantaneously from any wound, regardless of severity. So yeah, if her being three years old wasn't enough to be in FNAF, since apparently that's like the ideal age age for a victim, like Charlotte was, which now that I think about it, this could just be Charlie, but she also causes anyone around her for prolonged periods of time to want to mass murder. So yeah, that, that's FNAF material if you ask me. But ultimately, in a number two, Scrap Trap Endo. Scrap Trap is already a creepy animatronic, somehow changing from a small, realistically sized head in Spring Trap to a giant, weird alien head in FNAF 6. Scrap Trap is definitely one of the most interesting Afton looks. It looks like he's going to Coachella and trying on a load of outfits. However, this man needs to keep as much clothing on as possible because this version of Scrap Trap's endoskeleton, or what it would look like, is absolutely horrific. And yes, that's what I meant by clothes, not because Afton is a walking mass of exposed muscle and absolutely unsightly in the most horrendous ways. No, it's because his endoskeleton for the Scrap Trap animatronic is freaky. Like, why does his head have to be that shape? It's an animatronic, not a freaking pop figure. Scrap Trap needs a pop figure, though. I will definitely buy that. So, Funko, do it. 
Still, either way, Scrap Trap Endoskeleton is literally one of my worst nightmares. And finally, in at number one, Scrap Glam Rocks. With Security Breach on the horizon, releasing in a, actually a, a month as this video is going out, I believe, we still had to include the group of animatronics as scrap versions on this list. And honestly, it's pretty accurate considering how Chica in that promotional image and the recent trailer seems to be pretty scrapped already. They, they wouldn't really have to do much there to have that really work out. However, the versions that I've actually seen are scarily horrific in a way that makes me concerned if they'll be in the real game. I don't think these would be in the game, but based on that old theory that I had about how these characters are acting like zombies, this makes me feel like that theory is a little too right. These animatronics being made into scrap animatronics are honestly some of the weirdest custom scrap versions I've seen, and that makes them the scariest. I tried to stay away from anything newer, or I guess that I had covered in previous alternate fan version videos, but holy crap, these scrap rocks, as I want to call them, are absolutely haunting. This is what the Halloween update for this game should be. These are actually perfect, so thank you. Number 10, Shadow Withered Chica. All of the withered animatronics are just horrific. So what happens when you combine them with the shadow animatronics? You get gloriously terrifying creations like Shadowed Withered Chica. Withered Chica is already really creepy due to the fact that she is missing both of her hands and really only has wire left in place of them. Her bright yellow coloring usually helps to offset this creepy detail when it comes to her appearance, but the shadow version of her gets no such counterbalance, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on your opinion. Her dislocated jaw is also highlighted even more here by the fact that she's in shadow, with her bib becoming a disturbing beacon in the darkness. The only thing you can like see looming when she comes towards you, you're like, ah, her bib. Never thought I'd be so scared of a bib. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want even more FNAF lists, you know we want to give them to you. So be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number nine, Shadow Sprite. Shadow Sprite appears to be a completely original animatronic design. Sprite is described as a mammal and a carnivorin. Carnivorin meaning likely that Sprite is an eater of meat or flesh. So a carnivore. Carnivorin is kind of just another word for carnivore I believe. So you definitely would want to watch out with this animatronic as it won't just store you somewhere. It'll likely ingest you and potentially ingest your soul as well. Who knows? Maybe this is the only animatronic who doesn't really gain remnant from killing people and can't really extract that, storing the soul, but instead completely devours its prey. Sprite appears to have two large arms that are wing-like, save for the fingers on the ends of them. It has feet like a dog and giant ears that are almost bunny or dog-like in appearance. Kind of reminds me of those like floppy bunny ears. Number eight, Crazed Shadow Puppet. So there are actually a whole series of these shadow animatronics and I love them. I love these little like crazed animatronics. Their expressions are great. For some reason they really remind me of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Maybe it's that wash of insanity or maybe it's all the dripping inky like look of their faces. But yes, it's definitely giving me Bendy vibes. Crazed Shadow Puppet is probably my favorite of them all as we can also see that not only is there something very disturbed about this grinning, wide-eyed expression, but you can also see upon close inspection that the puppet faceplate here is cracked as well, which also feels somewhat symbolic to me. Having a face with a crack in it while also seemingly losing your mind. I mean, it's like your mind has a crack in it, you know what I mean? And it's seven scrap glitch trap. You can fight me all you want about my opinions on Springtrap and the fact that he's not an animatronic because he's just a dude in the suit, but there's no way you can fight me on the fact that Glitchtrap isn't an animatronic. Firstly, he's just game code with no real world equivalent aside from William Afton. Secondly, he's literally just a suit, you can tell by the fabric. The different design to the Bonnie we know and the stitching around his joints and you know, it, it's a suit. But this version of Glitch Trap, known as Scrap Glitch Trap, is designed to be an animatronic, therefore it counts for this list. This thing is f***ing horrifying. I've always had a soft spot for Glitch Trap, okay? I hate this thing, because like, you know, it gives me um, creepy bear vibes, if you know what I mean. You know, if you, if you look at old memes, old memes, you'll know. <laughs> it's an old meme, but it checks out. It's a very, it's a specific bear that may have candy in his white windowless van. Anyway, I hate this kind of thing. And the way that Glitch Trap just like 
stands there and waves and then slowly gets closer to you who's playing a child in the game it doesn't sit right with me hence why I avoid picking up tapes because I don't like him now with all that said this version is still worse the actual scrap appearance along with like the desaturation of the costume and the exposed endoskeleton and all the wires it's too much for me I can't do it I'm done Number 6, Shadow Chica. Oddly enough, Chica is one of the few main cast at Freddy's who doesn't really seem to have too much of her own shadow version. We we don't really know why this is, but just because Chica has a lot of weird love coming her way doesn't mean that she doesn't deserve to also have a super scary and mysterious alternate shadow version. Fans of course have looked to rectify this by giving her one. Granted, you have to be careful where you share said fan made animatronics online in terms of communities as some have attempted to do so in canon based wikis where it's considered a major no no. So yeah, but they're still out there. I like that they also still exist on those wikis. They've just been like, you can't do this here, but we're not gonna like delete it. We're just gonna like move it around. Shadow Chica is typically depicted as being less rounded than our FNAF 1 counterpart and a little bit more uh, curvy instead. Why is Chica always drawn curvy, even with FNAF 1? I don't know. Her eyes, teeth, and the eyes of her cupcake stand out glowing a bright white. So many curvy chicas. I can't, even when it's not toy chica, people are like, let's give her a waist. I'm like, I, she's like a chicken. I feel like, I don't know. You can be either way, really. I'm not trying to body shame chica here, just FYI, just to be clear. I just think it's interesting the way that people choose to draw her. Halfway through in a number five, Scrap Toy Chica. As a proud member of the Toy Chica Bucket Club, seeing my girl scrapped really breaks my heart. The very versions of Scrap Toy Chica always put me on edge just because of the amount of exposed endoskeleton. These are damn creepy. No matter what, whether it be slightly destroyed, very destroyed, or hell, even the withered Scrap Chica, it doesn't make me happy to look at it. I mean, this video was already going to make my history questionable to say the least, but this just makes me sad. There isn't really much else to say. Like, I mean, like, it's Scrap Toy Chica. It's what you'd expect. Picture the Glamrock Chica teaser image with her destroyed, but it's Toy Chica, and then boom, you got Scrap Toy Chica. Number 4, Shadow Toy Foxy. Shadow Toy Foxy is a very different looking shadow type animatronic. Instead of being quite as dark with pinprick white eyes like other shadow animatronics, this version is a bold purple that is somewhat see-through, revealing their endoskeleton through their somewhat translucent purple outer exosuit. Kind of reminds me of those old Max people had in the early 2000s where they had like colorful plastic on the back that you could see all the inner workings and the motherboard through. I might be aging myself here, but that is a thing. I remember those Max. I don't think I ever owned one though, sadly. Of course, this could also just be an artistic rendition of what would be a much more shadowy animatronic should it appear in game, because you know, this is a drawing. Shadow Toy Foxy not only looks scary, but also manages to look refined as well, keeping their bow tie, lipstick, and bright cheeks. Getting close to the end, in number three, Nightmare Glam Rocks. Nightmare versions are designed to be the scariest versions of their respective animatronic, and you know what? I get it. That's why there are so many fan made versions of them. Because while elements like rugged exosuits and stomach mouths are common, you, you can only you can only do so much with those. You can head anywhere else from your own imagination. Same with scrap versions. However, these nightmare versions are something else. Considering their pristine appearance in the trailers and promo images, well, ex with the exception of Chica, there is a stark contrast between these two versions: the normal glam rocks and the nightmare glam rocks. Jeez. There just seems to be the ultimate nightmare aesthetic going on with these characters specifically, even more so than like twisted Funtime Freddy. I don't know why these animatronics specifically make me think that way, but maybe it's because like Glamrock Chica is my babe, but like now, even still. Glamrock Bonnie isn't even a thing yet, but their nightmare Glamrock is I still want it in the game. But with the amount of jack that comes from these FNAF games, I wouldn't doubt it if Scott just threw these in to make a more solid connection between Gregory and Crying Child. It, either because it's canon or because he wants to mess with us. Because that's something he would do, especially when he's leaving and the person next to him, or the person after him, has to clean up his mess. Number 2, Shadow Toy Chica. Shadow Toy Chica is maybe the most horrifying of all of the fan-made shadow animatronics because of how hot everyone is still obsessed with making her. Once again, this is Toy Chica, so Shadow Toy Chica is not removed from that. We're still making her like a weirdly sexy <laughs> animatronic. Well, yeah, 
like I said, she she is a version of Toy Chica. Shadow Toy Chica is typically depicted as having a big jagged grin and an X on her chest, both of which, along with her pupils, glow a bright white. Sometimes she can also be seen carrying her cupcake, which glows a bright white or neon blue. Shadow Toy Chica also has her own Twitter profile that someone made for her under the username Shadow Thought Chica. I think that says it all when it comes to just how scary this fan made shadow animatronic is. Number one, Nightmare Shadow Mangle. I thought that Shadow Toy Chica would be the most scary in principle, and then Nightmare Shadow Mangle came along. Mangle is already a horrifying animatronic, so this really just adds a layer to that. Nightmare Shadow Mangle is a lot more intimidating, considering that it's really hard to see. Mainly what we can see of this animatronic is its bright white glowing teeth and its eyes, and the eyes that belong to its endo puppet parrot. Yikes! This version of Mangle would be hard to spot if you face it in person, and when you likely did end up noticing it, it would probably be way too late. It would be like, I got you, and you'd be like, oh, dead. <laughs> And it's in Funtime Chica. Now before you go off on me for talking about Funtime Chica, before FNAF 6 there was no Funtime Chica, so any form of this character was actually fan made. Like this fan made teaser from Hero Golem on DeviantArt. The lack of beak already makes this version unsettling, but add in the Funtime's ability to move their faces at will, and you have some, some genuine nightmare fuel, and probably the least scary animatronic. And by that I mean scary in like a typical sense. Not to mention the different nightmare Funtime Chica's that I saw looking up Funtime Chica fan made. It was a lot, and this is really something that I need to be careful of because when I searched Funtime Chica fan art instead, I got an entirely different art genre than I was looking for. Like, come on, Google, save that for my phone late at night when nobody's watching. And at nine, Nightmare Toy Chica. Nightmare Toy Chica is honestly what you'd expect from a nightmare version of your favorite chicken robot. All the glory of Toy Chica with the horror of a nightmare, the countless sharp teeth, stomach, mouth, body even though they're toy and plastic so it doesn't really make sense, exposed endoskeleton, the works. And those without a beak are even worse than you'd expect. You'd expect that without the beak there would be less teeth, but no, in fact they have the same amount. And they're ready to bite your head off. If anyone was going to have caused the bite of 87, it would be Nightmare Toy Chica, and not just because of Toy Chica's ultimate custom night death line. Although that is a whole, whole other can of worms for another day. And it ate Twisted Toy Chica. Twisted Toy Chica is basically, if I had to describe it, which I do given that I chose this list and then put this on the list, would be Nightmare Toy Chica cranked up to an 11 and then squared. These things are horrific and they're all different in some way. One has boils all over with the classic nightmare aesthetic. One is covered in what looks like egg sacs. One has an additional Toy Chicas and cupcakes coming out of their arms and back. And one is a combination of Toy Chica, Toy Bonnie, and Toy Freddy and is one of the most unholy abominations that I've seen. This looks like it belongs in a Dormitibus game or alongside the creation and joy of creation. While the variety is incredible and the fact that each one is different is rare to say the least, they all end up being scary. But others are even scarier. And it's 7 SCP-978. SCP-978 appears to be a standard red and black Polaroid Super Color 645 CL instant camera, with no distinctive identifying marks or damage. SCP-978 operates the same as a standard camera and shows no anomalous behavior beyond the photographs it produces. When a subject is pictured with SCP-978 though, the photograph that develops shows not what the subject was doing at the time of the photo, but rather what the subject wanted to be doing unless what they wanted to be doing was what they were doing. Now unlike 838, I don't think that this would really help explain anything, but the sheer amount of power an object like this would have to someone like William Afton is horrifying. Like oh, let's take a picture of you and Bonnie, click, finds out what they really want to be doing, oh hey, I have the exact thing that you want to be doing in the back room, come follow me. Or hell, even like just us as the player, we can find out what Afton really freaking wants for once. And maybe we can finally get some goddamn answers. Especially since this works on animals too, so maybe it can work on like spirits? I don't know, the foundation hasn't tested that yet. They tested it on rabbits. Apparently all they want to do is bang. I'm not kidding, there's actually like a log that talks about them taking a picture of a rabbit. 
and it was just them mating with another rabbit. In at six, NSFW Chica. Ah, uh, yes. Now it's nighttime on my phone when nobody's watching. And while we're just showing tame or normal Chica for this number, the amount of not safe for work chickens I've seen would even make Colonel Sanders shake with fear. It's scary to me how accurate Rule 34 is if I'm being 100% honest. No matter what, if it is on the internet, there is some form of NSFW version for you to find. And that's pretty nasty. Especially given that these are animatronic animals with the souls of dead kids possessing them. I think that I'm gonna side with PETA this one time and this one time only. If they made an adult video site that was Chica themed and filled it with animal cruelty videos instead, at that point I would understand, because it's basically the same thing as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not kidding, that's actually a thing they did. I mean, like, it wasn't Chica themed, but I'm sure you get the idea. The Chica Not Safe for Work art is scary enough, okay? Look, if you're wondering why it's on this list, then you... Do you know why it's on the list. Number five, Shadow Springtrap. Not sure if it makes sense to have a Shadow Springtrap considering that Springtrap when he first shows up is still alive, or alive in the sense of being a shambling corpse that can still move and think, I presume, but he was trapped within a Spring Bonnie suit. I guess as alive as Springtrap gets. The shadow animatronics are typically all kinda ghost-like or glitch-like in terms of their appearance and what they stand for. I mean, they're kind of mysterious actually. We don't really know a lot about shadow animatronics. I think we had a whole video about shadow animatronics and like, what are they really? In my opinion, they're kind of like mirrorverse versions of almost all the animatronics we know, love, and fear. Like their other half. It feels weird to have this for some reason for an animatronic who is also a person, but just because it's somewhat unconventional, it doesn't mean that fans can't imagine what a shadow spring trap would look like. And the answer is, of course, terrifying because spring traps already terrifying so you shadow it still scared and for human withered chica there are no words for how this makes me feel look i know i joke about chica all the time and wanting to be with her etc like i even did the entire top 10 tastiest fnaf animatronics list specifically so i could make a joke that toy chica was the tastiest animatronic <laughs> If you haven't seen that video though, I highly suggest you watch it. I love that video, it's so funny. Nevertheless, this is wrong. Chica as a human is already a scary concept. Add to that the withered version with veins coming out of the arms instead of wires and a blood-stained dress. Emil Eines, however you say your name, I applaud you for your skill, but condemn you to the depths of hell for creating this and causing me to be so confused about what I should be feeling because of it. Like, what else could I say about this thing without probably getting myself in trouble with either one side of the internet or the other? Like, there's no winning here. I don't know. Why? Getting close to the end, in at number three, Nightmares. The Nightmare animatronics better not show up in this game. In addition to the whole timeline issue as well as the story issue, these animatronics specifically are supposed to be illusions, created in a child's head as his mind processes that he's in the hospital dying from being bit by Fredbear. The whole point of these animatronics is that they weren't real animatronics. Yet, if they end up appearing, like someone seemed to point out to me on Twitter, since the arm from the end of the very first trailer looks like Nightmare Freddy's arm, we're gonna be in for a treat. <laughs> and by treat, I mean me freaking out and going absolutely bananas, because that would be the icing on top of the crab cake, from my perspective, honestly. Plus, like I said, this would cause a whole kerfuffle, and it would mean that Afton is probably gonna come back. If they can find a reason to make imaginary animatronics real, and it's not just like in like a video game in universe or in William's mind, they would find a reason to bring William back yet again. And there would be nothing I can do about it. It would drive me insane. Penultimate lean at number two, Sinister Chica. One look at Sinister Chica and you'll understand why they're in the number two spot. Because they're going to make you number two your pants. Hailing from the unfinished fan game Sinister Turmoil universe, Sinister Chica was going to be one of the antagonists of that game. All the Sinister Turmoil animatronics are terrifying. And the fact that they are all terrifying makes them a staple on any of these lists at this point. Once I discovered them in the last video. While we may have only gotten Sinister Turmoil sewers and a story demo instead of the full game, this is one of the reasons I'm happy that happened. Sorry developers, like I'm not hating on you in any way, but I know 
for a fact that this would have made me unable to sleep for weeks. After playing FNAF VR, I already have to dive into my blanket after turning off my bedroom light. And like, it's a good jump, okay? This would just make me collapse. The lights would go off and I'd fall to the floor. Like the slightest movement of a shadow and my sheets would go from red to brown. All because I don't want them to be red with my blood. Okay, I have issues talking to my doctor. Not really. Finally, in at number one, Havoc Chica. Do I even need to explain? Havoc Chica, aka Maria, is a Havoc animatronic that hails from the Dormitibus universe. She is the Havoc version of Chica, obviously, and is a failed attempt by the Havoc puppet to give her spirit a physical form. While having the same color scheme as Chica, the two look nothing alike, aside from a face and beak. The mask Havoc Chica wears has a good amount of damage done to it. Her right eye socket has grown in size, arcing upwards towards her feathers. The rest of her mask has small withering in a few places, mainly near her right eye socket and her forehead. She has no eyes at all, resulting in her being blind. Her jaw isn't directly connected to her head either, like Chica from FNAF 1. Instead, her jaw looks more like her withered counterpart. Her jaw has withering on the sides as well, and t some towards the front. Her entire head is attached to a suitless limb segment, making her head stick out and away from her body. Like you're seeing it now. It's grotesque and nauseating to look at. And before you ask, no, it's not because I took my meds without having breakfast. Although that isn't helping. The bus ride getting here was rough. Firstly, based off of what we're expressly told in game, it could actually be possible. All we really know is that Bonnie ended up going into Monty Golf around 4am and then that was the last place he was seen. Quote from the duffel bag, security report. 12.24am, Bonnie is seen leaving his green room in Rockstar Row, heading east towards the atrium. 2.40am, Bonnie enters the East Arcade. 4.12am, Bonnie enters Monty Golf. That's, that's the last of a repaired Bonnie that we ended up seeing. Since, in another bag we learned, quote, With Bonnie out of commission, we are making Monty the new bass player. Parts and service has already done the proper adjustments. This could be a good thing. Monty could be even more popular than Bonnie. Which, in combination to the fact that uh, Bonnie was last seen in Monty Golf, suggests that Monty is the culprit behind uh, Bonnie's uh, destruction. Which is odd, in my opinion, because like we know Monty loves smashing things and like that's not the weird part about this. My thought is where was Monty chilling before he moved into Rockstar Row? <laughs> like we, we don't see any real living quarters in Monty Golf and the only other animatronics that we see outside of the core four is the daycare attendant who has his own room above the ball pit. So, where could Monty have been staying if not in Rockstar Row? Anyway, if Monty is to blame for the destruction of Bonnie, we could see Bonnie come back in the DLC. But unfortunately, it wouldn't be really to get revenge on Monty, since we see that Monty does indeed face justice. At least, justice if he was guilty for the crimes. <laughs> And, and, and if not, then it was just destruction. There is another theory, however, that could counter this point if it's true. The idea that Glamrock Bonnie's endo was used to create the new body that Afton inhabits in the true ending, Burn Trap. Now, we've covered this in another video, link to that is in the iCard, but in that video we came to the conclusion that the entire endo wasn't used, since the shoulders on Burn Trap aren't wide enough compared to the male Glamrock endos and the fact that Afton's muscle fibers, or nerves, again, still not quite sure what they are, are still connected, would prove that it's the old suit. But there are sections where the fibers are blocked, like on the left foot and left arm. Both things that he was missing, or were more damaged at the time, while in his scrap trap form. Seemingly suggesting that perhaps these specific parts came from Glamrock Bonnie instead of the whole endoskeleton. Maybe they were the only parts that they could use after Monty had his fun. Maybe they cut Monty off from destroying the rest of him, hence why he starts smashing his green room. We're not sure, and frankly the latter is just speculation, but it's still interesting. Originally, I was against the whole Glamrock Bonnie endoskeleton thing because, well, frankly, the body in the suit kind of disproved it for me. But I think I might have found a way to make it work, like, 
like I said, looking at the model, I'm still not 100% sure. But if this was the Glamrock Bonnie Endo, again, it, it would need to have broader shoulders, and actually it would need to be shorter. Uh, unless they're like using the, the female endo for Bonnie, which wouldn't really make sense, so I don't think that they would, especially if they're going to give Bonnie shoulder pads, but... I mean, like, even if we scale them so they're the same height, the endos, when posed the same way, and I'm comparing to, like, an actual endo, not the Glamrock Bonnie fan art, they still don't line up. And, I mean, there are similarities between the two, of course, but there aren't enough where I can even call this above 50%. There are also issues of, again, the muscles being woven throughout the body. If it was just the head, I would understand, since they could have just put the old head on a new endo body, but with the muscles throughout the rest of the endo, that's too intricate to have been placed there. Even if they were, they would be like, they would be dangling, they would just be hanging out, unless they had been stuck there, like, with super glue. <laughs> because, like, they were, they were deep in there, because, you know, he was shoved full of machine parts, so... Yeah, if Afton was going to transfer his head to a new endo, it wouldn't come with the rest of the body bits. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with the added the arm and the leg on after the fact. But, what would that mean for Glamrock Bonnie? Well, it would mean that if decommissioning Bonnie was a part of Vanny's plan to resurrect Afton, there would really be no Bonnie available that you could bring back, since he would really just be decommissioned. And while the other animatronics do come back, losing a leg and an arm is worse than your legs, your eyes, or just being smashed, since he wouldn't really be able to hop around on one leg despite being a bunny, and since he only had one arm, he wouldn't really be able to crawl like Monty does. So, I mean, I suppose the DLC could instead just be replacing Monty with Glamrock Bonnie, but that's achievable with mods, so there isn't really a point to making that a paid DLC, since we would all just opt into modding the game for that experience. Plus, certainly the model they use for Bonnie wouldn't end up being the one added to the mod instead of the current one. So at this point, we'd need a solid DLC to actually make it worth it. With that being said, however, Bonnie being decommissioned might actually impact his presence in the game, but not to the story. Since the DLC could be, like I've suggested before in, a, uh, in other videos, a series of missions that involve us investigating his disappearance, possibly as a favor to Freddy, since he really seemed to miss Bonnie. <laughs> like, he was, he was pretty sad when he was saying that there's no bunny in this pizza plex, not anymore. That was my Freddy impression. Maybe it would even be because Freddy was already investigating it or something like that, saying that he knows Monty's been giving him side eye and wanted to know if that Monty would be coming after Freddy next. Since after all, Monty is stronger than Freddy, at least until we break Monty's brains in with a giant bucket filled with balls, which is a total hazard, by the way. I mean, like, come on. The giant bucket that we use to crush Monty is such a s issue for health and safety for both employees and for customers. Because, like, if a six-year-old kid with a four-year-old's body can use it to destroy an animatronic, how safe is it going to be for literally anyone else? Like, what's the point of the bucket, anyway? Like, is it supposed to contain water? Because, like, when it falls on Monty, it breaks the catwalk that we're on, and honestly, water, especially in that quantity, is going to be a lot heavier than some ball pit balls filled with air. Seriously, who the living hell thought that this was going to be a good idea? Or like, how have they not gotten fined for it yet? Or if, or like, how have they not fixed it if they have gotten fined? Yeah, there are guardrails on the catwalk, but that doesn't matter if there's a giant bucket that can destroy the catwalk that you're standing on and then cause you to fall to your death. Especially when falling that distance, just like severed Monty's legs from his torso. Anyway, sorry, rant aside, maybe once Freddy has Monty's hands, we're able to investigate the rest of what happened to Bonnie. Maybe we get into Monty's green room and then kind of like suss out what went wrong. And no, that was not an Among Us joke, despite me constantly making Among Us jokes about this game because Gregory is sus, he vented. But like maybe in the end, we would find Bonnie's casing with a missing arm and a missing leg, and then we would know for certain that I'm right. <laughs> Now, do I think that this is going to happen? Uh, really? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. 
Like, a lot of people seemingly want to see Bonnie in this game, so much so that they are replacing Monty using mods, but also the idea for the Choose Your Guardian DLC is also very popular, and perhaps even more popular than the others. However, since we know DLCs to be canon add-ons, I'm guessing that a Bonnie investigation would be more likely than switching up the robot who protects us, since honestly, the whole Bonnie thing has less lore implications in the long run. Having someone other than Freddy protect us just seems like it would be too messy, especially with the fact that we would have to steal the other bits from the animatronics, and if we pick Roxy then we have her eyes the entire game, which is kind of cheating, but like, y you know, you get it? Y you do understand what I mean here? Like, I like the idea, but it's, it's probably just gonna have to be a mod instead of actual canon DLC, okay? I hate to say it, even though I say it every time I talk about this mod. And it's end the puppet. I think I might have said this phrase more than any other saying in this goddamn world, but the puppet creeps me the hell out. Any form of the puppet is creepy as well. Like, I, I don't even have a fear of dolls. Which I believe is called pediophobia. Either way, the, the puppet is one of the creepiest, creepy ass characters that I know of. And honestly, after seeing how it walks in FNAF VR, I don't want to see it running around the pizza plex because that's some horrifically terrifying <laughs> that I don't want to deal with. Not only that, but the puppet is supposed to be dealt with after FNAF 6. And if this game does take place after FNAF 6, like the appearance of Helpy in the first trailer suggests, the puppet has no business being in this game. So if it does show up, there are going to be some real issues with not only the timeline placement, but also like the lore, because I wouldn't understand what's going on at that point. I know that there's like those like little like um, nightmare puppet things, but like those are more like mini arenas, so... And at 9, the Stitch Wraith. Now, don't get me wrong, a Stitch Wraith appearance would be insane and would give us a canon version of the character. Well, a canon kind of like appearance. However, the amount of crap that this would mess up is beyond comprehension. The sheer lore implications this one thing would reveal just sends shivers down my spine. That would confirm every Fazbear Frights book in the main canon of the game. And it would also confirm them mostly as written, which would screw up the whole it's a matter of interpretation thing that we currently got going on. Saying that like, oh yeah, Andrew from the man in room 1280 is just representative of this. That, we, can, we couldn't say that anymore. Plus, I mean, from what we know of the story, it doesn't fit in properly whatsoever. This would be one of the weirdest ways to absolutely destroy the story of all the games. Like, the Stitch Wraith has no sway in the story that we currently know for Security Breach. Don't get me wrong, the narrative we've been told could be a total lie and a giant misdirect, but come on. Currently, if the Stitch Wraith shows up, um, I'm gonna be mad. And it ate the OGs. The original animatronics are definitely some of the most iconic from the series. The most iconic being Toy Chica, obviously. However, the OGs appearing in Security Breach would be much like if the puppet had appeared. It, at this point, would have already been dealt with. The Happiest Day minigame set their souls free and then their remnant was taken care of in FNAF 6's fire after entered as Molten Freddy got destroyed. At least if the games follow the novel story of the original animatronics remnant getting used in the Funtime animatronics. But even if they didn't, their souls were released in the Happiest Day minigame. That was the whole point of that minigame. So if the original animatronics show up, I'm going to be very confused. This whole timeline is very messy to begin with, so like we can use this as a way to sort everything out going forward. Like how I've been saying with the other two, these would just throw a wrench into everything that we've come to understand. And while this is par for the course for FNAF, I don't want to deal with it. And it's 7 Fixed Spring Trap or Scrap Trap. Fixed Scrap Trap doesn't sound scary at first, and then you see what some fans have done with this design, and then you crap your pants. The eyes for many of these versions is what makes it unsettling. The fact that everything on this animatronic looks put together and almost brand new, save for the fact that you can still kinda tell that there's someone in the suit, is off-putting. And someone who might not even really be doing well and is likely dead, is, yeah. The contrast of the clean suit with the manic eyes of it, there's something very unhinged about this version. I'm getting the vibes for that, really. And including this in the game could serve as William's new body, because I'm pretty sure he will unfortunately be coming back, despite my constant pleas to kill him off permanently, because for some reason everyone thinks we'll be able to redeem Vanny, which means that we'll need a villain, but I don't think so. I don't think there's any saving this bitch. And it's six Springlock suits. 
With this game seemingly being as far away from the first FNAF game as can be, it's been ages since Fredbear's Family Diner. So the Springlock suits which would appear at this location would be an absolutely horrible idea to include in this game. The timeline placement is already finicky enough, but including animatronics that would have been decommissioned for decades would definitely confuse everyone. Especially me, because I'm one for choosing the most complicated and unlikely scenario and then believing it so much that I dedicate a whole theory video to it and then everyone gets mad at me in the comments. But if we see the Springlock suits that were both destroyed for, well, kinda obvious reasons, I think it would be safe to say that it's a bad idea to have them make an appearance. Unless it's like in a form of like an easter egg in a museum display or something similar. Halfway through in a number 5 scrap Funtime Freddy. Funtime Freddy is a particularly interesting animatronic, looking like he just came back from filming a video with James Charles. Does he even make videos anymore? I don't know, nor do I really care. Funtime Freddy is creepy simply because he's like the most put together version of Freddy there is, ignoring Toy Freddy. Especially with the recent revelation, thanks to the Faz facts from FNAF AR, that revealed that the Funtime animatronics, despite being introduced in the fifth game, were among some of the first animatronics that Afton built, which I think was meant to serve as a way to show that he always had murderous intentions, but still. Take the creep fact that you get from Funtime Freddy, then add on to it the scrap adjective, and boom, you got yourself some good nightmare fuel. But like, not like this would be in your nightmares, like rather I think it would just provoke some nightmares, but it is certainly not for the faint of heart. And for scrap animatronics. The scrap animatronics are some of the most recent additions to the FNAF roster, being included in FNAF 6 and Scrap Baby being featured as a plushie in FNAF VR. The scrap animatronics were simply to allow for the story of the original group of victims to wrap up so we could move on with what comes next. So reintroducing them aside from maybe an easter egg would be a huge conflict, especially with, again, the timeline. Since this was supposed to take place after FNAF VR and AR, but FNAF AR's emails have the dates at which you actually receive them IRL, and FNAF VR is supposed to be the company trying to rebuild its rep after years after the final FNAF 6 fire, at least 4 years from my estimate in the timeline breakdown video I did. But with the reintroduction of these characters, it would have to take place sometime at least at the same time if not earlier. But it also can't be too much earlier since that would conflict with even more things. Do you see the issues I'm having here? Plus, they're just, they're, they're terrifying and I don't want to deal with them again. Getting close to the end in number 3, FNAF Plus Chica. FNAF Plus is a fan recreation of the first FNAF game funded by Scott with the Fazbear Fanverse initiative and will presumably be this timeline's version of the Fazbear franchise. Since games like Five Nights at Candy's revolve around FNAF's history and the joy of creation revolves around the game's history. FNAF Plus is meant to be a more intense and scary version of the first game since a lot of fans complain about how the first one isn't scary anymore. But, this version of Chica is messed up and all kinds of wrong. First of all, this version looks more like a little girl, which is going to cause a lot more messed up fan art, but also makes more sense given that she's possessed by the spirit of Susie who died while still as a kid. But the head proportions, and the fact that like it comes out like it has baby cheeks messes me up. Along with the fact that the puppet has a tuxedo and uses the candle as a top hat, what the hell? Like, I find that even creepier if I'm being honest. Like, I'm voice cracking, that's how bad this is. If you haven't watched these tapes, I suggest you do, because, like, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It, it also, like, looks like it would sound southern, you know? But ultimately, in a number two, Springer Scrap Trap. I know I already mentioned the Springlock suits and scrap animatronics before, but I just wanted to reiterate that I don't want to see William in this game, unless it is in the form of Glitch Trap, because that would be unavoidable if this thing is, if this is really the story. But Spring Trap or Scrap Trap aren't good ideas, since again they should have been destroyed and William now exists as sentient code. So any physical manifestations of the character would have to be illusions if we get possessed or some hallucination. Although I, I don't know how Gregory would, would know what either version looked like, considering how, you know, he's a kid. But like, I don't know, maybe that's why Special Delivery includes Scrap Trap though, because that's the way that Gregory can understand what he looks like and able to actually hallucinate him if we do end up getting possessed by William and then he starts driving us crazy. Damn, now I like the way that this is going. Hallucinations aside, an actual real version of this character 
would drive, it would make me mad, okay? It's a pretty simple request. This isn't No Way Home, we don't need a, like a multiverse and like time travel from like different aspects of the FNAF universe, okay? We don't need it. No matter how excited I am for No Way Home, we don't need it in FNAF. And finally, in number one, Music Man Spider. Music Man was already a pretty creepy dude, okay? He feels like that uncle that's always standing around at like family reunions when those were legal, and he like just, He's just chilling out in the corner, drinking, yeah. D music Man just chills behind you in Ultimate Custom Night, and then just like the old neighbors, he tells you to keep the racket down, resulting in a jump scare if you make or cause too much noise. However, here comes FNAF 9 with some goddamn arachnophobia, fear hallucination or something like that, because Music Man now has six legs and is absolutely gigantic. Yeah, this, this got real interesting real fast, and editor, I'm sorry that I'm swearing, but this makes me mad. Considering how I'm arachnophobic, I really hate this guy. But those who are arachnophobic and robophobic are going to find these sections of the game absolutely unplayable. So have fun with that. At least I'm not scared of robots, I'm scared of spiders. And I mean, like, I feel like I should be scared of spider robots, but they're not actual spiders. So I mean, like, apples and oranges. And while, yes, this guy is actually in Security Breach, and, like, he's being created for Security Breach, I put him on this list because I don't want to see him in the game! This will cause me to breach the security of my pants. And hey, Ted Glamrock Foxy. Speaking of not wanting to deal with additional lore, Glamrock Foxy would add a really unnecessary amount of just sheer annoyance to the game. At this point, Roxy is basically the love child of Foxy and Bonnie, and I say this every time. It, he even has a name that reflects the whole Foxy thing, okay? Since Roxy is just a combination of Rock and Foxy. I mean, like, I'm sure that's not intentional. Like, Roxy is, a, is an actual name that people have, but I figured that I'd mention it anyway because it's still like a combination of both words. And she plays the guitar, so there's a link to Bonnie. However, the main issue with this is just the fact that, like, Foxy is like a scarier Bonnie. I know all the diehard Bonnie stands are gonna come for my balls or something in the comments, but like, hey, look, I, I get that, that Scott had nightmares about him, okay? But honestly, there's just no contest between these two characters. Bonnie isn't actually scary. Yet the Glamrock versions that I see for Foxy fit in well. And considering the pirate right Easter egg that seemingly introduces another Foxy, I talk about that in the top 10 tiny details you missed in the FNAF Security Breach trailers video, we might very well get a special version of this OG animatronic. Or we might already have one running around and we just haven't seen him in the trailer. And a 9 Spider Ballora. Anyone who knows me knows I hate spiders. Big, small, poisonous, venomous, non-aggressive, any form of spider deserves to die, and if it's near me, hopefully it will. And while the Havoc puppet is messed up, if you know me, if you've watched any other fan videos, you'll know the Havoc puppet. The spider version of Ballora is literally called Spider Ballora, and I hate it with all my guts. While a couple of Nightmare Balloras have spider legs, this takes it to the next level. Her original form of crawling like a spider was already bad enough in my eyes, but now I have to deal with literally three eyes, eight legs, a thorax, and six arms. What the hell? Man, why on God's green earth would you create this unholy monstrosity of a creature? Like, this is the kind of thing even Satan wouldn't approve of. When you die and you have to walk down the stairs to hell, Satan's gonna hide behind the gate and tell you to just keep walking. This is true horror, and I don't care what you think. You don't think it's scary? Good for you, but I'm not sleeping tonight. And with the introduction of the Music Man spider animatronic thing, whatever that unholy creation is, more spider animatronics, unfortunately, are now par for the course. And I don't want to deal with it. And it ain't Shadow Fredbear. Shadow Fredbear is almost perfectly intact, only burnt black in color. And he has a few rips on his body and is missing his left hand. The area around his mouth appears torn slightly as well, revealing a majority of his endoskeleton teeth. And his teeth and eyes glow, which makes it easier to see. Wonderful. Imagine if this animatronic had gums, though. <laughs> <laughs> if he did, that would probably be the scariest thing on this list. But, like, the absolute monstrosity that would have been created just by giving this character f***ing gums is... I don't want to talk about it. My genius is sometimes terrifying. But, nonetheless, this is still creepy without gums, okay? Especially because this dude is... Like, he looks like the, the FNAF VR jump scare that's just like the glowing eyes or nose and mouth that are like glowing red. It's like that. Okay, it's weird. 
This dude is powerful and he replaces most of the other animatronics on Night 5 of Final Nights 2. However, with the connections that Gregory and the Crying Child seem to share, perhaps Shadow Fredbear would be a way to enhance that connection further. Or it could be a hallucination or a manifestation created by Glitchtrap in an effort to scare us into submission so he can be sacrificed or whatever the hell he wants from us. And at 7, Bonnie. Now I'm calling out Bonnie specifically because honestly having any form of Bonnie animatronic in this game would be kind of pointless at this point. Bonnie has been largely removed from the game for currently unknown reasons, however introducing a glam rock Bonnie or something would kinda come out of nowhere and it's not really worth it. Bonnie sure is a fun animatronic, but the lack of a Bonnie animatronic could be serving as a way to demonstrate that Scott is moving on from the series after this game, since we all know that he believes Bonnie is the scariest given that he had nightmares about the character while playtesting FNAF 1. So Bonnie not being included is kind of symbolic in a way, and I'm sure it didn't start off this way unless Scott had been planning his retirement for a while, but to include a Bonnie now would probably cheapen the game, especially because it's not really that big of a reveal. It's not going to be like Cap holding Mjolnir or if there are really three Spider-Man in No Way Home, so it would just kind of be annoying for me. And at 6, Twisted Fun Time Freddy. While there are a plethora of twisted animatronics, both from the mind of Scott Cawthon and others, none are quite as terrifying as Twisted Fun Time Freddy. Twisted Fun Time Freddy combines the nightmare design of previous animatronics with basically everything else that you would find terrifying in an animatronic. Like, I don't know why the teeth have to be angled slightly outward and like, I don't, what, I, I don't know what it is about this animatronic that makes it so much more terrifying than everything else, but it worked. It doesn't matter. Even if it's not pointed outward, I think the mixture of the visuals plus the thought of them also being able to move their face plates from being underground and still twisted but moving. It just, everything culminates in my brain and just causes panic. Like, it, it's like a sensory overload, but with FNAF. And honestly, that's what FNAF does to me nowadays. This, these are freaking nuts. And I, I don't know what it is about it. It's in, it's in essence a nightmare animatronic, but seems so much worse. Plus, it's a way to work in the different twisted animatronics into the game lore, including the canon ones and additional fan ones, maybe. Halfway through in at number 5, SCP-309. SCP-309 is a small, plush, stuffed animal that looks as if it has been turned completely inside out. Gold orange fur is present along the seams, while a small amount of cotton stuffing and two protruding eyes are visible on its head. The interior of SCP-309 is understuffed with cotton, giving it a flexible and cuddly feel. SCP-309 has no effect on inanimate objects, however contact with living subjects is both dangerous and sometimes life-threatening. Humans and animals lightly brushing against SCP-309 with a finger or or a similarly small portion of the body display severe, non-localized discomfort for tens of minutes afterwards. Humans also report feeling extreme nausea, despite the fact that 309 does not induce vomiting. If SCP-309 is pressed firmly against the subject, or the subject quickly picks up SCP-309 and attempts to hold it, the subject will be violently and painfully turned inside out within 10 seconds. Which I feel like at this point is pretty par for the course in FNAF's world. Okay? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. FNAF's world. This, this could just be a way for William to get out of the goddamn spring trap suit, honestly. That's what I would use it for. In it for Ignited Freddy. This game could also serve as a link between game worlds if that's the plan. A breach in the security of the dimensional barrier, if you will. Scott would stretch a title like that, let's be honest. And Ignited Freddy is one of the main antagonists of the Joy of Creation fan game, which will have a new Ignited collection released as part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. In this game, you play as Scott Coffin, whose creations have escaped from the game and are coming after you. Ignited Freddy appears to be a burnt and charred Freddy Fazbear animatronic. He has no bottom jaw, he's exposed this endoskeleton's bottom set of rusty teeth. His left ear is also missing. Ignited Freddy, he wears a top hat though. We love a classy gentleman. Like his original counterpart. <laughs> Both of his hands are also missing along with the suit on his shins and his left forearm. He has no real eyes, only black holes with white pupils. But adding this to the game could serve as a way to connect the fanverse to the main universe and get fans excited for the fanverse initiative games in an interesting way. Number 3, Nightmare Shadow Bonnie. Nightmare animatronics are already terrifying enough. We don't need to give them anything else to make them even more scary, do we? But that is just what this fan-made version does, so I guess maybe we do. Nightmare Shadow Bonnie 
Bonnie is a version of the Nightmare Bonnie animatronic, one that happens to be more shrouded in darkness due to its shadow like inky black coloring. However, even in shadow, this animatronic still gives us some detail so we can see how tattered it is. For some reason, I also find its expression, face shape, and its teeth to be even more horrifying than the standard Nightmare Bonnie animatronic version. So maybe we need like, maybe we do need shadow nightmare animatronics, like a whole series of them. They'd be really scary. And ultimately, in a number two, Glamrock Puppet. Every time I make a list discussing creepy animatronics, every single time, without fail, a freaking puppet makes it on the list. That's mostly because the puppets are freaking terrifying, man. And I feel like the phone guy, whenever I, I talk about it, but like, the puppet is creepy. And the Glamrock Puppet is no exception. This character wasn't originated in the Fury's Rage game like I figured. Yes, I actually called it by its proper name this time. But instead, it's just a separate design. Just no matter what, it just looks like it wants to bring me to the back of the pizza joint to show me where it, it puts the salami. I don't mean literally, but like, you get what I mean. And not only does it come with its own creepy concept art, but it also comes with Minecraft skins, because of course it does. This is one of the weirdest versions of the puppet, not taking into account Scrap Puppet, Wither Puppet, or Reaper Puppet from Final Nights 3. Yet this design, it also still fits into Security Breach, and considering how we got a version in Fury's Rage, maybe we should get a version in the, the full game. Hopefully it doesn't float though. And finally, in at number one, Glamrock Bonnie. I think the freakiest part about Glamrock Bonnie is the fact that they're not going to be in the game. So as far as I can tell, the only mention of Bonnie will be in the bowling alley that we probably aren't really going to get to use. But for the most part, like with the rest of the animatronics, these designs aren't really scary. Well, aside from the Minecraft model. What's with people in making Minecraft animations for all these FNAF characters? The game hasn't even come out yet. Freaking Glamrock Puppet, freaking Glamrock Bonnie, just chill out. Either way, these versions, aside from one from a Twitter user called Manute Art, aren't really all that menacing. But the idea that people are creating additional animatronics is scary enough to me, because I don't want to deal with the additional lore that would come from that. But these designs are incredible, so maybe I could deal with it if it's just like one of these versions that was included in the game. Just just make sure that it's like one of the first few you see. Okay, Scott, don't, don't scroll down too much. Trust me, it's not worth it. The rules of the internet are there to protect you. In a 10 SCP-191, SCP-191 also known as the cyborg child, is a female human child of unknown age. Well, to us anyway. The foundation knows, but they haven't redacted. It is believed to have been the test subject of several experimental surgeries performed by a now deceased doctor of unknown name. 80% of the left half of her face and skull have been removed, with the eye and ear replaced by a complex transceiver system that allows it to receive and transmit not only visual and auditory input, but a wider spectrum of electromagnetic radiation ranging from a low frequency radio to high energy gamma rays. The lower jaw, teeth, and larynx have been removed as well. The esophagus has been rerouted to an artificial orifice in the back of the neck, which is a feeding tube, and the trachea rerouted directly to an air filtration device. This seems like something that Afton would do in order to keep his family alive or to bring them back from death. Like, this is what's hiding in William's basement, and Crying Child is the cyborg child this time around. In the 9 SCP-699, SCP-699 is a clear rectangular case 2.5 meters by 1.5 meters by 1 meter in size. Engraved on the side is the SCP Foundation Keter symbol and SCP-17591. The artifact appears to be made of plexiglass, but it is in fact a super dense polymer much stronger and heavier than any material currently manufactured. The weight of the object is estimated at around 24,000 kilograms. SCP-699 shows no seams in its construction and no obvious means of opening it. It has resisted all attempts to open, damage, or acquire a sample of the material and it is composed of. Attempts to acquire a small sample of the material so that it can be reproduced though are still ongoing. Does this sound familiar at all? A strange box that we can't open? Well, how about this? Quote, the contents of SCP-699 are under investigation and currently in dispute amongst researchers. Oh yeah, baby, that's right, the FNAF 4 box. However, the contents of SCP-699 are apparently telepathetic and appear different to most observers, depending on their design and psychological state, so maybe that's what's going on with the FNAF 4 box as well. Perhaps some things are best left forgotten for now. In at 8, SCP-838. SCP-838 is a collective term for a series of job ads appearing in newspapers that print in the vicinity of Chicago, and whatever agency is behind them. The job offered varies between instances, and has included positions in accounting, management,
management and janitorial work among others. These ads are entirely mundane unless responded to. Attempts to trace these classifieds have also proven unsuccessful. The next time a person who has responded to SCP-838 falls asleep, he or she immediately enters REM sleep. The affected individual reports experiencing extremely vivid dreams of having a job interview for the advertised job in a large windowless office building. Anyone hired by Pellis Inc, which is the company behind this, is to be considered part of SCP-838-1. Those not offered jobs are unaffected. When members of SCP-838-1 sleep during the week, they report vivid dreams of working in what is believed to be the same building that the interview took place in. In these dreams, the workforce of Pellis seems to consist entirely of people who have responded to these ads. Could this perhaps explain why we keep going back to this same job where we almost die over and over again, and why our alarm is a grandfather clock, and why we only stay until 6am? Could this be a real dream brought on by SCP-838? Hmm, I don't know. Sounds like Dream Theory Level 2. Like in at number 7, Monster Chica. The Monster Chica animatronic, like Monster Freddy from the alternate fan versions of Freddy List, is a simple edit of the Monster Rat animatronic from the Five Nights at Candy series. Which, technically, if you consider the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, is still actually kinda canon, but it's still fan made and therefore belongs on this list. The edit mostly consists of making the character yellow, adding a cupcake, and then changing the snout to a beak. But this is still terrifying to say the least. And not to mention the bolts coming out of its body looking like spikes. It's it's horrifying. If the FNAF animatronics are my sleep paralysis demons, this one is taking the shift tonight. Like, it's freaking horrific. And there are some that look like Havoc Monster Chica. Like Havoc Chica from Dermidibus combined with a monster version. And don't worry, you'll you'll see Havoc very soon. But like, how is this a thing? Why is this my life? I give myself nightmares for a living. Thank God for Canada's free healthcare, otherwise my multiple heart attacks from seeing these things would cost me literally my heart otherwise. Like I would have to sell my organs. And I'm not shrimply pibbles, I can't just have a dong be my heart. That was for you Rick and Morty fans out there. Season 5! And it's 6, SCP-423. SCP-423 has no physical form. It appears to exist entirely within textual narratives. It was discovered in a used bookstore in Texas, in a copy of Tom Sawyer. The book seemed perfectly normal except for the inclusion of a character named Fred, who was not known to exist in any other version of the story. However, it was not until it was left by a copy of Moby Dick that the anomalous structure of SCP-423 became clear. 423 is able to enter textual narratives, inserting themselves as a minor character. The details of the character vary from story to story, but it is always a character named Fred, or something similar, and its role in the story is usually minor. Physical descriptions of the character are rare, but it usually appears as a human male of average height and middle years. However, this can change depending on the nature of the narrative. But Fred has been a character in FNAF forever, so I mean this doesn't really mean much. So this could honestly just be a fun way of introducing a new character, or instead this could be a riff on Jeremy, so that's why there are multiple characters named Jeremy in the series so far. One of them is this Fred guy, but I don't know, it's just a thought. Halfway through in at number 5, FNAF AR. FNAF AR Special Delivery is certainly an interesting game, but the animatronics present in that game are even more interesting. With skins like Clown Springtrap and Arctic Ballora, it's always cool to see new takes on our favorite animatronics. Get it? Because she's Arctic. However, the cooler thing <laughs> would be to see these animatronics in Security Breach. I mean, we've already seen some of them in the Furry's Rage video game, which saw us fighting waves of enemies throughout the Pizza Plex, so why not just put them in the main game? Especially some of the fan-made versions from that game, because those are way cooler than anything in the actual game itself, okay? It could help explain why the animatronics that should be dealt with are back, especially since it's, it's an argument as to why any of these animatronics should actually be added, because it would mess with the lore of what we already know. See yesterday's list for me using that reason multiple times to explain why even some of these animatronics on this list shouldn't be added to the game. But hey, I'm all about contradicting myself, okay? It gets people talking in the comments. Speaking of which, who do you want to see in Security Breach? Who isn't like actually like confirmed? Like don't say, oh I'm looking forward to seeing Fr No, don't, don't do that. Who do you want to see in Security Breach who isn't confirmed yet? Let me know that you actually made it this far into the video by answering that question in the comments. In it for SCP-1048. SCP-1048 is a small teddy bear, approximately 33 centimeters in height. Through testing, composition of the subject revealed no unusual qualities that make it discernible from a non-sentient teddy bear. Subject is capable of moving 
on its own accord and can communicate through a small range of gestures. The subject regularly shows affection to individuals in ways found endearing by most people. Affection is usually given in the form of a hug to the lower leg, but subject has also been observed dancing, jumping in place, and in two separate events it has even drawn childlike pictures for janitorial staff. All foundation personnel that have interacted with the subject have responded positively to its affection. Even D-class personnel with normally psychopathic tendencies. However, SCP 1048-A is where things wander into FNAF territory. Since 1048-A is a small teddy bear of similar size and shape to 1048, however this A variant is made completely out of human ears and will go around causing anyone that comes within a 10 meter radius to grow ear-like appendages, extremities, whatever, all over their body. Joy. Do I really need to explain why this should be in FNAF? Maybe William could finally get some flesh on his bones again. <laughs> Literally. Getting close to the end in a number three, Scrap Orville. I found this Scrap Orville through a mod that replaced Orville, I'm assuming, with the Scrap Orville version. Orville Elephant isn't a particularly scary character, and that remains the same for the rest of the mediocre melodies. However, this Scrap Orville mod, made using a model by DeviantArt user Holupaxum, based on a design of Reddit user u slash fandom trash 198787, is honestly terrifying. <laughs> Scrapping animatronics always makes them scarier, and with the lore implications that the original Orville gave with his death lines and ultimate custom night, I can only imagine what a Scrap Orville will add. And I've stated it time and time again, the lore is the scariest thing in the series to me. And the sheer lore implications of not only a Scrap Orville, but all these fan-made Scrap animatronics is actually haunting how terrifying it is. If you've ever tried to explain anything in this series in at least somewhat of a reasonable way and not a whole Sans' is phone guy kind of way, you'll understand my struggle and you'll relate to me on this. Penultimately, in at number two, SCP-017. SCP-017 aka The Shadow is a humanoid figure approximately 80 centimeters in height, anatomically similar to a child, but with no discernible identifying features. SCP-017 seems to be composed of a shadowy, smoke-like shroud. No attempt to find any object beneath the shroud has been successful, but the possibility has not been ruled out. SCP-017's reaction to shadows cast upon it is immediate and swift. As SCP-017 leaps at the object casting the shadow, and completely encloses it in its shroud, whereupon it returns to its normal size, leaving no trace of the object it attacked behind. And this is the kind of thing that I honestly expect the ghosts to do in the FNAF universe. Like if we really think about how the ghosts of the original five victims would act, I think it would be similar to this. I mean, this is kind of how they attacked Afton, right? Especially if the shadow looks like a small child. It would also fit into the universe in that sense. However, there would also have to be like five instances of it, but that's fine. It may Makes sense to me. And finally, in a number one, SCP-173. SCP-173 aka Peanut is probably the most famous SCP out there. It is constructed from concrete and rebar with traces of Krylon brand spray paint. SCP-173 is animate and extremely hostile despite looking like a statue. The object though cannot move while within a direct line of sight. Line of sight must not be broken at any time with SCP-173. SCP assigned to enter their container are instructed to alert one another before blanking because they're must be at least two individuals. Object is reported to attack by snapping the neck at the base of the skull or by strangulation. Personnel report sounds of scraping stone originating from within the container when no one is present inside. This is exactly how Foxy acts in FNAF 1 if you think about it. You have to keep checking in on him to make sure that he doesn't come sprinting at you to break your neck or whatever, however the animatronics kill you. Sure, with Foxy you don't need to have eyes on at all times, but Peanut would basically fit in perfectly in the FNAF world. And he's honestly the reason I came up with and started this list to begin with. So yeah, do it.